I hate to say anything's like the most important thing in jiu-jitsu, but this is one of the things, whether you're on top or you're on bottom, that is going to win you a position, okay? It's, it's hard to believe, but like this one little arm movement can like completely dominate an entire series of positions. But whether you're on top or you're on bottom, having the underhook is, is so important. There's uh, other things you can do without it, but man, it just makes everything so much easier, okay? It, uh, it can really win you that instant battle, okay? And if you get really good at digging it from top and bottom, your uh, jiu-jitsu is going to really thrive in that environment if you make this like instinct to dig for that, okay? So first thing we're going to do here is half guard here, okay? Now, I always want to try to build a frame if possible here, okay? Elbows in. If I can get a knee shield in, this is really good, okay? That's not always the case, though. A lot of times I'm going to defeat this knee shield, and he's going to try to start coming in and pressuring in here. Once he gets his shoulder pressure, he gets to be flat like this. It sucks, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to be there. It's very hard once he gets to that point to get him off of me. If he is, you know, at least the same size, same skill level, it's very hard, okay? So what can change this entire scenario, though, is just one little move. I'm keeping this elbow in. Notice, oh, he's going to be trying to get an underhook here because that's what he wants. Well, I want the same thing. So this is the battle here, okay? So my elbows are in. I'm building a frame here. As he's trying to work his way in, I'm going to fish this in to here. Watch my elbow the whole time. See that? See, it's connected to me. If I fish like this and leave my elbow out, he's going to pummel. Okay? So when I go under, elbows in. I've got connected to my hip here. He's going to have a hard time digging this in. Okay? And I'm here. Notice I'm on the side of my hip. I'm not flat. It's going to be much harder from here. He can get his shoulder pressure down, and the underhook's not doing me as much good. I'm on my side here like this. Now, if I can get up to my elbow, even better. Okay? This is really good. Okay? So I'm up on my elbow here. I mean, even if you're not even going to hit a move here. Even if you let him out of half guard, and he's coming around to pass the guard. If I have that underhook, I can completely disengage from him on this, even if he's like almost out of my guard, because I have that dominant position on the underhook, okay? So we're here, he's trying to come around, I've bought this frame, my elbow stays in here, and I swim it under, and I keep my elbow connected here. Okay, elbows here. Now, as soon as I can, I want to try to get up on this elbow. Notice I'm keeping this arm safe here. I'm not just like leaving it out where he can start controlling it. I try to keep it tight to me here, and I've got this connected to my thigh, and I'm under his armpit. Try to leave no space where he can pummel that arm out, okay? From here, you have options to come up for single legs, attacking the legs if you like, you know, more of a wrestling style. We can dive under for deep half guard. Um, I can pummel my leg in for like a butterfly guard position. So many things can happen here. Okay, now all I gotta do is change my arm position to here. So many things are gonna happen to me, okay? It totally changes the game right there with just that one arm pummel, okay? What's gonna happen is a lot of people are gonna get here and they're gonna, they're gonna overhook like this. And this is like a false sense of security that you have something good here. Like, oh, he's got me, I've got him, no. Big difference. If we were on our feet, you know, it's a different story when you're going for throws and things. It depends on other variables. On the mat, it's, it's different, okay? Uh, this top hook here, if I tried to roll him with this or anything, all he has to do is stick his hand out and post, okay? Right there. Unless you've got a good submission set up here that's really tricky, this isn't going to get you very far, okay? If he's got this underhook like this, you're better off framing here and trying to get away, okay? That's saying his head is available to frame on. If he's got an underhook, normally his head's gonna be under my chin here. Yeah. And I'm getting past, okay? Or I'm getting smashed one or the other. Okay, so as soon as someone is in this position and they're coming in on you, you want this underhook, okay? It's that simple. Dig the underhook. If we're flat here, he's got me in side control. Hey. As soon as, as soon as I can bump out of side control here, I'm going to post my feet, I'm going to hip escape, swim out here, okay? If I'm not going to pull back into guard really tight, I can swim this under, 
And look where I'm at. Instantly aft moment because of the underhook position. Details on this arm, okay? When you've got this underhook, it depends on what you're trying to set up, okay? But just, if you can't decide yet, do it this way. When I come under like this, I get on my elbow, okay? If I, if I underhook his arm like this, okay? Or I grab his knee like this, it feels like I can pull myself to him and get myself up a little more, but essentially I'm pulling him to me, which is what he wants. He wants to keep his weight on me here, okay? I don't want that. I want him off of okay? So if I want to dive under him or I want to go for his back, you know, there's certain grips I need to get. So what I want to focus on is this arm is up like this. I want to be up in his armpit. I don't want to be like way down here because right now he can just bite down with his arm and really like put some pressure there, okay? I don't want that. I'm up here in his armpit like this. My bicep, my elbow pit is kind of pinched around his armpit here and I'm shooting my hand like up towards where the wall makes the ceiling over there, okay? So I'm in this position there. Now I have a lot more leverage on Clay here, okay? So if I'm wanting to go for the back, he's pressing into me and I shoot up this way, see that swims him right off of me, okay? Versus if I'm just on his lower back here reaching across, and he's you know, just fighting muscle on muscle there. I don't have the leverage aspect, especially if he's a bigger opponent. It's just about leverage, okay? So we're using this large fulcrum here to push him over. So we're here, we're gonna straighten this. It's almost like freestyle swimming, where you swim over like this, okay? Here, swim over, there, okay? So we're here, he's pressuring, we come up, Ooh. That's where we wanna go, all right? You can come under and grab the belt. Still keep your elbow in though. I can get a belt grip here on the back. Okay, you want to see that? And this can be used for different things, okay? So it's almost like pull it up on me here. All right? But don't hang out there too long. I don't want him to settle his weight on me. By me getting on my hip here and getting under his arm, this has got him off of me. The last thing I want is for him to advance his weight back on me, okay? So I've got the belt here. I need to keep coming up into it here, getting up close. Which is what we're going to make him want. Push into me more. Which is what I want when he pushes into me. Mm. I use the momentum to execute my technique. Okay? If I just hold him there though for too long, it's just going to be that sedimentary thing where they get heavier and heavier. You don't advance your position. And everyone's miserable. Okay? So that position of the arm is very important. Okay? Don't go halfway one way or the other. Either get the belt and set it going under, or swim it up into the armpit to keep their upper body off of it. Okay.